I appreciate you stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about the Optimus Pro LX5 Model 2 or Roman numeral 2. There was an LX5 and this is the upgraded version. This guy came out in 2000 and sold for $150 per speaker, which would be about $300 per speaker in today's money, today being October 2023. They're an 8 ohm speaker. They didn't really give uh, a, an efficiency rating to them. They were given a frequency response range of 80 hertz to 25 kilohertz. The driver here is a 5 inch uh, mid range driver, and then this Linnaeum tweeter. Maybe I'm not pronouncing that right, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. This was ferro fluid filled for heat dispersion and better frequency response. They do have um, some binding posts in the back, the three way binding posts, and I'll show you a little bit closer view of the top and the back in just a moment. The grills obviously come off. There's a top grill and a front grill. Um, these woofers have been refoamed by my buddy Ian. They're his speakers. And he thought I would like to check them out, and that's why they're here. The power rating for an amplifier to drive these, according to the catalog, was between 65 and 130 watts. So I'll show you just a little close up of the front and the back, and then we'll go over the data, and then I will tell you about what I thought of them after I listened to them. a plot showing the LX52 speaker impedance and I'm showing both of the speakers here and for the most part they track each other over frequency. This is rated as an 8 ohm speaker so our 8 ohm point would be here and for the most part we're looking close to 8 ohms for part of the band and then we dip down to as low as about oh maybe five and a half ohms here at about 105 hertz, 110 hertz area. And then we have a high of between maybe 21 to 23 ohms in this area. That's probably about 60 hertz. Then it kind of varies a bit between, what, 17 to 8 ohms or pretty close to 8 ohms. The nice thing is that it never gets lower than 5.5 ohms or so. Now, in case you're curious about how the phase looks, let me bring that up. This guy here in red is our phase plot, and I do have the actual real impedance with which we just looked at. And you can kind of see how the phase varies over frequency. It basically goes from about 0 to maybe 23 degrees worst case phase change over frequency. Here are the frequency response plots of both the LX5 two speakers, and these are taken with the covers off. The measurement is made using a calibrated microphone that is placed one meter away on axis, and it's pointing in between the tweeter and the woofer mid-range, I guess I will call it. And the amount of power is one watt going into the speaker. The sound pressure level, I guess I would say, if you come over here, it's about, and drop to this line right here going across at 85 dB. I would give that to be the sound pressure level. Uh, it's down a bit here, it's up a bit here, but over the average frequency, if I probably average those out, we'll just say that it's around 85 dB SPL. And if you look over here, this would be about 70 hertz uh, at this spot. And if we go down, uh, till we're out about 10 dB down, which would be at about 75 dB SPL. That's about 62 hertz. So this thing kind of doesn't give much base energy below 62 hertz, let's call it. Now you can see that both of the speakers are measuring pretty close to one another. They're off a little bit here and there, but for the most part, they match each other fairly decently. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the cover on a measurement. And let me 
put that on. We'll get this guy off. So this shows the effect of having the covers off. That would be your highlighted line right now. The highlighted trace shows the effect of the covers off. And as expected, at the higher end of the frequency band, let's say that's around 7 kilohertz, there is definitely an improvement if you don't have the covers on. And then they kind of uh, even up here maybe at about, oh, what's that, 12 kilohertz, a little over 12 kilohertz. So if these were my speakers, I would probably have the covers off because they also look cooler with them off. So that's kind of what the uh, frequency response tells you on this speaker. So that's kind of what we gather from the frequency response. Yeah, it's kind of smooth right here. Uh, you know, from, oh, whatever spot this is, I would say, you know, from maybe about 1.6 kilohertz to uh, maybe 6 kilohertz. It looks, you know, fairly, you know, smooth for something like that. And then it kind of has a little jagged thing. And that's probably largely related to just the room that I'm measuring these in. For my listening test, I removed my Klipsch KG2 loudspeakers and connected the Optimus Pro LX5 to speakers in their place. The amplifier I use is an integrated amp, which is the Project One Mark XX, which has its own little video. It's basically rated around 45 watts per channel into 8 ohms. And I use my Surfans F20 music player. Oh, I forgot to point out that we do have a little port in the front to improve the bass response of the speaker. Now, I listened to a variety of music, and I thought the highs were a little lacking. They didn't have the, the brightness um, that I was used to. In fact, earlier in the day, I had listened to the Realistic Mach 2 loudspeakers, even though these videos will probably be shown weeks or maybe even a month apart. They're actually filmed on the same day just for logistic reasons. And I thought that while the imaging on these guys was better than on the realistic Mach 2 speakers, the Mach 2 speakers definitely had a better high frequency response. Now, I hadn't paid any attention to the REW data that I took, which you had seen earlier, prior to my listening. I just kind of took the data and it looked okay and just set it aside. But after I listened to it, I pulled up the data and indeed, there is a high frequency roll off on these speakers that starts at about 10 kilohertz. So this 25 kilohertz uh, specification they thought it went to, uh, I'm not sure if that was when they were brand new or not, but definitely they are not flat at 25 kilohertz. Anywhere near that, they start rolling off about 10 kilohertz, as you saw in the data. Now, maybe that's due to the capacitors in them being a little weak. I don't really know. As far as I know, these are the original speakers aside from the refoaming of the woofers that Ian did. Also, I had both the front and top cover removed on both speakers for my listening test. Now, they didn't sound really bad. Obviously, you need a subwoofer when using them, but if you wanted a small speaker for maybe a bedroom or something, they would be a good choice where you might have a real small amplifier or maybe uh, a not a bad speaker to have for a computer that you're using. Maybe not a gaming computer, but just kind of a, a general purpose speaker for a computer. If you had a little uh, amplifier, kind of Bluetooth uh, DAC unit like the Ayama T9 could hook up to these nicely and you can have a nice little system. But I did think there was some of that detail, high frequency luster missing from these speakers. So that is what it is. Once again, I thank you for watching the video. And as you know, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, that would be a really nice thing to do to help this channel grow. And of course, I welcome your comments in the description area. And if you have questions about audio or the channel, that kind of thing, maybe not necessarily related to the speaker, um, leave a question in the email link given in the description area. And when I get enough questions, I will do a question and answer video. Exciting. <laughs> so once again, I thank you for taking time out of your busy day or night to check out this video. And until next time, have a great day or night.